Unusual activity is unfolding across the solar system and several celestial objects now occupy positions and display behaviors that challenge standard cometary models. Among the most striking of these is the interstellar visitor known as 3I Atlas, an object that arrived from beyond the Sun's gravitational domain yet behaves only partly like a conventional comet. Though it carries a coma and tail, its morphology is unstable and its jet activity is unusually variable, and recent observations show a distinct structured feature pointing directly toward the Sun, a sunward-facing tail, something rarely witnessed and not yet fully understood. Plasma outflows and bursts of dust have been recorded at irregular intervals, further complicating efforts to classify the object. Now moving in the direction of Jupiter, it continues to exhibit traits that raise questions about its origin, composition, and underlying dynamics. A second object has now entered the conversation. Comet C 2025R2 Swan. Though unlike 3I Atlas in its known orbital history, R2 Swan has unexpectedly begun developing a similar sunward facing tail. For both objects, to display this feature simultaneously is statistically uncommon, and their parallel evolution has prompted renewed examination of the environmental, geometric, and physical factors that could be at play. R2 Swan was first recognized during its extremely close approach to the Sun at perihelion, a location so near that the object escaped detection until it had already departed the tightest section of its trajectory. The comet executed its solar dive from a relatively low inclination near the ecliptic, much like 3I Atlas, and shares the same characteristic greenish hue typically associated with diatomic carbon fluorescing in sunlight. In the past several weeks, a sunward-aligned dust structure has strengthened in R2 Swan's coma, creating an unmistakable parallel to the phenomenon observed in the interstellar object. Combined orbital modeling reveals an additional layer of intrigue. When the object's trajectories are traced forward from their respective perihelia, September 12th for R2 Swan and October 29th for 3I Atlas, their positions relative to Earth form a geometry that resembles a pincer configuration. While this alignment is almost certainly coincidental, the arrangement is visually striking. Two energetic cometary bodies positioned on opposite sides of the Earth at roughly the same time, each with anomalous tail structures pointing sunward, each showing recent morphological changes, and each following paths close to the solar system's main orbital plane. From a strategic viewpoint, the formation mimics what in terrestrial military terminology would be called a flanking maneuver. There is no evidence to suggest intent, of course, but the configuration highlights how celestial motion can occasionally produce arrangements that resemble purposeful structure. R2 Swan's earlier invisibility underscores a broader limitation in current detection capabilities. Although the solar system is now monitored by a growing network of automated telescopes and sky surveys, many small or fast-moving bodies, particularly those approaching from directions near the Sun, remain undetected until they are extremely close. R2 Swan was only recognized after it reached its perihelion at 0.5 astronomical units, a tight sweep that placed it between Earth and the Sun without sufficient warning for comprehensive study of its inbound phase. Such late detection is not unprecedented, but the increasing number of objects being discovered only after perihelion has renewed calls for expanded observational coverage, dedicated solar approach detection arrays, and additional infrared and space-based instruments capable of watching objects hidden within the sun's glare. Orbital simulations show that as R2 Swan receded from perihelion, it passed relatively near Earth before continuing outward. Around the same time, 3I Atlas completed its own perihelion and began shifting into its post-solar inbound trajectory. When both objects' positions are plotted on the current date, the visual alignment becomes clear. 
3I Atlas lies on one solar flank of Earth, while R2 Swan lies on the other. Both travel on paths only a few degrees from the ecliptic plane, 5 degrees in the case of 3I Atlas, only slightly more for R2 Swan. Because most planetary bodies and much of the inner solar system's material orbit along this same plane, any object that approaches closely aligned with it will interact gravitationally and structurally in ways more relevant to the broader architecture of the system. The similar inclinations of these two bodies heighten interest in whether the ecliptic itself, with its distribution of solar wind patterns, magnetic structures, and heliospheric current sheet interactions, plays a role in the emergence of similar tail phenomena. According to the Astronomer's Telegram, which collects real-time reports from professional astronomers, R2 Swan has undergone significant changes in brightness and structural behavior since its perihelion. Reports earlier in the season described a notable outburst, followed by indications of fragmentation. Fragmentation is common among comets. Ice-rich bodies frequently shed material or split under thermal or tidal stress, but the timing has drawn attention because another comet, K1 Atlas, a different object from the interstellar 3I Atlas, also recently broke into multiple components. For R2 Swan, orbital modeling suggests a long period trajectory of roughly 784 years, meaning it is not a new visitor, but a returning long-haul object whose prior passage occurred in the Middle Ages. The dust and particle distribution in its tail depends heavily on the geometry between the Sun, Earth, and the comet. When Earth intersects or nears the comet's orbital plane, tail structures can become more visible, including rare features such as anti-tails. Anti-tails, or sunward-facing tails, are optical projections formed by larger dust grains that lag behind a comet's main tail structure. As these grains experience significantly less radiation pressure from the sun, they tend to remain confined near the orbital plane, under certain geometric conditions, especially when Earth crosses the orbital plane, the dust band appears to point toward the sun, creating a visual illusion that defies typical comet tail expectations. In early November, only a faint hint of such a structure was visible in R2 Swan. By mid-November, images clearly showed a distinct and rapidly lengthening sunward-aligned dust plume. Observers documenting the phenomenon across multiple platforms, including professional observatories and amateur astrophotography communities, have collectively confirmed the presence of this structure. The timing of its intensification, coinciding with Earth's improved viewing geometry and the possible physical growth of the dust band itself, continues to be analyzed. The similarity between the structures of R2 Swan and 3I Atlas grows more pronounced as images accumulate. R2 Swan's new jets and dust plumes exhibit shapes and angles reminiscent of the features cataloged in 3I Atlas months earlier. Both comi show asymmetric outflows. Both objects are dominated by green emissions from diatomic carbon. Both display high-contrast jets that are unusually easy to observe, indicating strong or episodic internal activity. Time-lapse sequences of R2 Swan show brisk apparent motion across the star field, a reminder that the object is traveling quickly through local space. Though such motion is consistent with typical post-perihelion outbound dynamics, its visibility reinforces the sense of motion and change in the region surrounding Earth. The apparent coordination between the two comets is almost certainly coincidental, but coincidences in space are often as compelling as purported anomalies. When two unrelated bodies show parallel evolution, similar coloration, comparable tail structures, and simultaneous orbital alignments near the same planetary plane, the situation naturally invites speculation about underlying drivers. Some have proposed that these similarities reflect responses to the same seasonal solar conditions, particular alignments of the heliospheric current sheet, specific magnetic configurations, or enhanced solar activity influencing volatile outgassing patterns.
Others have suggested that rare tail morphologies may become visible in clusters when observational geometry lines up favorably across multiple bodies at once. For those exploring the boundaries of plasma physics, the behavior of 3i Atlas has been of particular interest. The object's outflows have led some theorists to frame it within the speculative category of plasma bions, self-organizing plasma structures theorized to exhibit quasi-lifelike behavior under certain electromagnetic conditions. While such ideas remain beyond mainstream scientific consensus, the irregularity and dynamism of 3i Atlas continue to fuel alternative interpretations, particularly when its features appear to echo in the morphology of unrelated comets. Plasma structures in cometary comi, especially those influenced by the solar wind, can behave unpredictably, producing jets, knots, disconnections, and sudden morphological reversals that challenge traditional modeling. Such anomalies prompt broader questions about the nature of the solar system and the larger galactic environment. The Sun exists within a neighborhood dense with potential planetary systems. Stars such as Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, Sirius, and dozens of nearby red dwarfs host or likely host planets, many of them within habitable zones. The planetary cluster, known as the Pleiades, located roughly 444 light-years away, marks a region with a high density of young stars. Statistically, it is improbable that life exists exclusively on Earth, and implausible that no advanced civilizations occupy nearby planetary systems. The scale of the galaxy, coupled with the diversity of conditions in which life could evolve, lends weight to the interpretation that complex or intelligent life likely exists elsewhere, even if not yet detected directly. Speculation extends into the realm of multidimensional interpretations of physical reality, where certain forms of life or intelligence might not be bound by the same constraints of space-time as visible matter. If such hypothetical entities could move or manifest in ways that intersect only partially with the physical plane, then the appearance of anomalous objects or inexplicable structures could be read as signs of higher dimensional interactions rather than technological craft. While this concept is not supported by observational evidence, it remains a topic of fascination for those exploring the intersection of astrophysics, consciousness studies, and theoretical physics. The unusual behavior of 3i Atlas and the evolving morphology of R2 Swan provide fertile ground for discussions that bridge empirical astronomy and speculative thought. Even within a strictly scientific framework, the current situation remains noteworthy. The simultaneous rise of sunward-facing tails in two unrelated comets, each following near-ecliptic trajectories, sharing similar coloration, and arriving on opposite sides of Earth, highlights how dynamic and unpredictable the inner solar system can be. Late detections, abrupt fragmentation, and unusual photometric behavior are not uncommon in cometary science, yet the convergence of so many anomalies at once invites closer scrutiny. As observations continue, the evolving structures of 3i Atlas and R2 Swan will help refine models of dust dynamics, solar wind interactions, and heliospheric conditions. Whether these similarities ultimately prove coincidental or rooted in shared physical drivers, the current alignment serves as a reminder that comets are far from inert relics. They are active, reactive participants in a complex solar environment that still holds many surprises.